I'm Elaine Johns. I'm one of the inventors of a technology called Globo Hydropower. The technology upgrades existing in-use engines to hydrogen hybrid engines. The benefits of the technology is that it reduces 30% fuel consumption and up to 40% emissions reduction. Hi, I'm Michael Roberts. I'm the master mechanic at Globo Hydrogen to Power. Today we're fitting the kit to this Cabelco excavator and yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Joe Brown, Director of Hydrogen to Power, H2P. Uh, we are the sole distributors for the product and commercialising it through, throughout Australia and New Zealand. Uh, this morning we are on an industrial site for an installation onto an excavator for a company called Concrush one of many that have made a move to go green and to reduce their fuel intake. Um, hydrogen to Power has been working closely with the New South Wales government who has uh, given us collaboration with the hydrogen hubs in New South Wales and we've had inquiry now from hydrogen hubs all around Australia. We're working very closely with Macquarie Bank um, who are getting involved in financing the product throughout Australia and also the NRMA are now probably our first um, inquiry to go on a ferry. So we have uh, contacts for heavy vehicles, heavy machinery, locomotives, and now we're really excited about getting into marine. The Globo Hydropower installation kit commences with a hydrogen gas cylinder. Hydrogen gas stored at 200 bar. In this particular cylinder, it's an E-sized cylinder and it contains 4,400 litres of compressed hydrogen. The hydrogen then passes through the high pressure hose. The high pressure hose has an anti-whip connection to it. So it limits the bends and the re reduction in flow. From the high pressure hose, we feed through to a two-stage regulator. A two-stage regulator allows the hydrogen to have a consistent flow into the engine continuously. From the two-stage regulator, we then feed into a flame arrester or a one-way valve often called a flashback arrester. That stops any engine backfire or any engine incident of spark transferring all the way back up the hydrogen hose into the gas cylinder. Leading from the flame arrester is a low pressure hydrogen transfer hose. Characteristics of these transfer hoses are that they can extend in pressure internally to five times their value. These hoses are interwoven steel that will allow them to be protected in an, in an industrial environment um, or an accident situation. Following on from the low pressure hose, we're leading up into the engine air intake and we're using our hydrogen injector. The hydrogen injector determines the flow rate of the hydrogen going into the engine, specific to that particular engine. Following on from the low pressure hydrogen transfer hose, we're moving into the hydrogen injector. The hydrogen injector is the key to the technology. It determines the hydrogen flow into the engine. The hydrogen technology, Globo Hydropower, actually draws back 30% of the fuel and that's controlled through an electronic unit. Yeah. Okay. So the PCB part is all good. yeah. Um, so the next part, the ancillary parts of the Globo Hydropower kit includes hosing clamp, electronics, which are fuse, are fuse connectors and fuse wiring, brass connections, and essentially we have 
electrical wiring and vent hosing. Hydrogen will always vent into the atmosphere but it needs to be controlled and vented through a vent hose. As hydrogen is a new and emerging industry, regulations are growing around safety. In Australia, we use a yellow hexagon as a symbol for the emergency services that there's hydrogen on board that engine. So in case of an emergency or an accident or an incident, the emergency services know immediately there's hydrogen present. As the Globo hydropower technology is commercialised internationally, there will be a point of difference. And that point of difference is the hand wheel that connects to the hydrogen gas cylinders. In each country, the hand wheel and the, the cylinder connection needs to be identified specifically for that country. Optional is a hand wheel that can be used to turn the hydrogen gas flow on and off in locations where the cylinders are stored and mounted that are difficult to get to on a daily basis. So this hand wheel on an off switch allows you to mount this bracket and the hand wheel for easy access. So optional is this on and off valve it's used in situations where the gas cylinder is stored in remote or difficult locations to access on a daily basis. Noting for compliance that hydrogen is a very light molecule and it will seep through any other metal other than brass and stainless steel. So compliance requires that all hosing connections need to be brass. Again with hydrogen, there's a number of specialties that need to be maintained and the tape that joins all hydrogen connections needs to be Teflon, non-oil based tape. Part of the Globo Hydropower technology as a safety feature is a solenoid. So the solenoid valve is electrically installed into the system so that when the engine is turned off the solenoid shuts the hydrogen down immediately. It also shuts the hydrogen down in an accident or an unexpected situation. Throughout the design of the Globo Hydropower kit, safety has always been a focus point. In that context, the hydrogen gas cylinders need to be secured via brackets. The brackets that we're now looking at are specifically designed for the Globo Hydropower technology as they've been reinforced so they won't bend or be compromised throughout the use on industrial equipment, trucks and buses. The next step is to now fit the Globo Hydropower technology to this excavator. I'm Terence, um, I'm a mechanic and I'm just see the bottom bracket about to mount it so we can mount the tank onto this not too far well, not too close to the exhaust you don't want any sort of heat going near it here the exhaust is going that way and the tank's going to be here it's got some sort of airflow going to it too so yeah the bracket's going to go here I've already marked my holes drilled two already so it's going to go there gives you enough clearance underneath so it's not going to be rubbing on this sort of plate here. And yeah, that's pretty much it.
So what I've got here, I've got a high pressure line and I'm just chucking tape on the threads so it can be compliant with hydrogen pressure. And it already has O-rings on it, but like I said, it's just to be compliant with hydrogen. All right, sweet. Let's check. Don't need too much, just enough to assist it. So once you've got it on, you just nip them up. Let's get this out of the way. Pretty much it. So as you can see, tape just goes onto the threads. Just so it just kind of helps it seal a lot better. Already has the O-ring on here, as you can see. It's got a tapered chamfer on it. Usually that's where it would seal, and then the threaded part would pressure this onto the other fitting. But this also help the thread seal, just in case anything bypasses here. This is the bracket, pretty easy, two holes, but you tap, tap here, it's preset so you shouldn't have to really adjust anything, and yeah that's pretty much it. So we use Teflon tape instead of thread locker because the molecules can bypass when it dries out and Teflon tape just ensures that it stays airtight or hydrogen tight. So that's why we prefer this as per our standards, opposed to this. Hello, my name is Jamie, owner of the truck. Soon you know when I go global hydro power in my truck, I save almost 30% and the emission into the, um, into the air. This is the engine bay, you're looking down into the, uh, on top of the engine, on the excavator. You can see down there that the hydrogen housing has been um, fit it into the air manifold. Just down looking into the uh, engine bay of the excavator, you can see the hydrogen hose is uh, being inserted into the manifold, the air intake. Housing's been connected to the hydrogen tank and to the uh, manifold. We'll just follow this, this is a hydrogen cylinder here. Hydrogen comes out the back, out of the uh, valve on top. It'll be secured to the railing. The high pressure uh, hose goes into the bottom of the regulator and the low pressure house hose comes out on either side of the uh, two stage regulator. Going along a bit further, the um, solenoid valve has been connected. With the electrical wiring going into one side, and the uh, hydrogen then going from from the through the solenoid valve to the uh, engine. So today we're going to test the system, we've fully installed it, uh, installed the Global Hydro uh, system. Um, we've filled up 25 litres and we're going to run 30 minutes with the just straight diesel, test it, check the fuel, check how much fuel we've used. Then we're going to turn on the hydro, hydro Global system 
and then run it again and then compare the two to yeah, see how good it works. about to commence the non-hydrogen test. We'll run the engine for 30 minutes and we'll come back with the results of the fuel consumption after 30 minutes. How are you going? Good, so. Yeah, good. So we've got the hydrogen. We're just doing a, a non-hydrogen test. Okay. So we can do the before and after. So um, the, the, the basic principle is the hydrogen's going into the air intake. Okay. And by adding the hydrogen, it reaches the RPM. How much pressure is in that bottle? 200 bar. So it can blow up? It's got an automatic release, so it'll vent.
The no hydrogen test is now completed and the result was 3.5 litres of diesel consumed in 30 minutes. We'll now commence the hydrogen addition testing. And now we're going to commence the hydrogen test. We're going to run the engine for 30 minutes with the addition of hydrogen. We've just completed the hydrogen testing, so it's hydrogen and diesel. The result was 1.3 quarters of a litre used in 30 minutes. So the, the technology is called Globo Hydropower, short for Global Hydrogen Power. What we're going to work through now is the safety and handling of hydrogen gas. The key element with the hydrogen gas is that it's 99.95% pure. So hydrogen has to be um, kept in a, an enclosed space, four parts oxygen to one part hydrogen before it will explode. So you need a spark an airtight contained space and it has to be four parts um, hydrogen to one part oxygen. So basically they call in this gas and you'll see on the MSDS it's an inert gas because its purity is 99.95%. It is in gaseous form. Hydrogen in a gaseous form is far safer than hydrogen in a liquid form. In a gaseous form it's stored in the cylinders that's at 200 bar pressure, which is the industry standard. The cylinders are five millimetres internal steel. The gas companies um, stipulate in their um, regulations that those cylinders can take an impact of a handgun. So they're not, they're not, they're not like an LPG system where it's made of a soft aluminium alloy. These cylinders are made to take impact. Storing these cylinders 
you can have 50,000 water litres in any one location before you have a HASCAM requirement for a HASCAM sign. The primary requirement for the cylinders is that they're stored in a location that's three and a half metres away from any other fuel source um, and kept in together. So that's the, three and a half metres from other fuel sources. That wouldn't be a motor yeah. out of the diesel source yeah. in the fuel tank. It's, where, it's when you're storing them in, in a multiple storage situation, you have to keep them three and a half metres away from other fuel source. So in the MSDs will tell you it's the storage of them that they're concerned about. Okay, the cylinders have to be kept in a, a ventilated location. Um, unlike fuel and LPG, the hydrogen, should it actually um, be released from the cylinder, the cylinder has an automatic release valve. When it reaches 500 degrees temperature, it dumps all the gas immediately. So should the gas be released, it's a light molecule, it's, it's lighter than um, helium. So it'll rise three times faster to the atmosphere than um, helium will. So unlike LPG and other fuels, it doesn't lay around. So it doesn't pit like LPG does. The hydrogen gas is a very light molecule, it will rise straight up. The automatic release valve will take over at 500 degrees Celsius. So you can leave them out in the sun without any problem at all. Um, just when you're passing through the, the training material here, you'll find that it's very, very important to have them vented. If we were to put hydrogen cylinders into a passenger vehicle, it has to be an enclosed box. And the enclosed box has a vent valve. So we need to, we need to control the venting. But out in the open, there's absolutely no problem so with it. You were saying then that um, there's no issue with it being in the sun. That's correct. Um, I don't know. This is uh, this. I don't know if we've got the right one here. This is a BAC for um, hydrogen gas um, in the compressed form. What the, yeah. that one is, and it does say here to uh, protect from sunlight, uh, protect from sunlight, and keep away from heat, sparks, open flames, hot surfaces. How yeah. does that go like if we're in 45 degree days? Um, yeah, when this is saying different to what you just said. Sure. Like, so yeah. the, the gas companies actually store these outside in the heat. So yeah. they, they don't store them under shelter. Okay. Um, and the gas companies say that the vent won't take place till it's 500 degrees. Yeah. The reason being the cylinders, the gas inside can enlarge three times right. before, before it becomes unstable. Yeah. So the cylinder being a very, very small molecule, it can enlarge itself three times before it becomes unstable. Okay. And we have a lot of trucks that have it out in the open like this, it's not a problem. It's, it's when you're starting to encase them in buses or passenger vehicles, mm -hmm. that's when you have to have venting control. So on, so you've fitted these to trucks and where do they go on the truck? Where you... mainly, mainly the back of the cabins. Right. So it's, okay. it's got a venting location. The one rule is that it's not in the cabin with the driver, it's like any fuel. You can't have any fuel in the cabin with the driver. Yeah. So that's the rule about where you put it. Out in the open, but not in the same cabin with the driver. Okay. Um, the gas here is, when you're rebuying it, it's 4.0, so it's industrial grade hydrogen. There's two grades, there's high purity they use for medicine and, and food. So you want the 4.0, the gaseous one, which is um, industrial grade. And it's, it's more calorific value, so it's more... It's, it's, it's got a better burn capacity. The high purity ones won't, won't burn during the combustion process. So but we'll send that through to you with the gas company um, introductions of who to speak to and so forth. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's 4.0 is the key that you're after. Right. It, is a, it is a flammable gas un, under the coating of HASCAM. It is a flammable gas, but it's non-toxic because the hydrogen, you can't see it, you can't smell it. And if it was vent, to vent into the atmosphere, it's already in what we breathe, it's in the air we breathe. So it's not going to harm us in any way. Um, so it, it is flammable gas, so it needs to be in a controlled position, not where there's a direct spark that's going to send it off. Um, if it does, which we'll come back to the pictures here um, progressively, you'll find that this, if there was a... a sorry, <laughs> this is sorry, difficult, sorry. Just trying to get there, thank okay. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's a good idea. Thank you. If there was to be a flame, the hydrogen being such a light molecule, it will rise up into, and I can share these pictures with you, will rise up into a candle. It will not spread out. So 
storage is venting as we talked about. Okay. It will not spread out in, in a wide space. Hydrogen will candle upwards, which I can show you through here. Okay. We've got different classes of hydrogen. So I said the 4.0 is what you're after, the industrial grade. Okay. Yes, it is a flammable gas, but it's non-toxic, um, non-oxidizing, non-corrosive. Uh, hydrogen, it's a, it's a new industry, we understand that, and people are getting used to hydrogen. But hydrogen is used for medication, it's used for food preparation, it's in the, it's in the margarine. It turns the margarine yellow, so when we're, it's in the food we eat. So <coughs> at any stage, we can inhale it and it's not going to hurt us. The code red for hydrogen, so the emergency services know it's hydrogen. Okay. Um, where as, you, as you would know from an industrial background, all, the, all hard gases have a different colour, so hydrogen's code red. The gas companies have their labelling on it, which tells you it's 4.0, their barcoding. So always the labelling on the cylinders and the integrity of the cylinders belong to the gas company. Under compliance, the gas company have to check the safety valves every time that they fill them. And so it's the gas companies who are totally responsible for the cylinders. They must check the safety valves, they must check that the integrity of their cylinder is there every time that they fill. So, so you set up 500 degrees, just read this in there, then they operate comfortably between minus 20 and up to 50 plus, comfortably to 65. you got a 40 odd degree day out here in the heat of the machine, that's going to be over 65 degrees of radiated heat coming off the top of that bonnet. Yep. Next yep. to the engine and everything. Or where, just that way to see that. Page 16, mate. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, page 16. Up to, up to comfortably 65 yeah. degrees. Absolutely. That before the gas actually expands. So that, remember, the, the, it's designed to expand three times internally. So here's page 16. Right. So you can leave it sitting in the sun without it expanding at all. So the gas has the ability to expand three times inside the cylinder, but you can leave it here comfortably 65 without any expansion. All right. The cylinders, obviously we don't, we don't roll them, we don't put sparks near them. I mean, you've used cylinders around here um, before, so you know the cylinder safety of that fact. You treat, you treat it as a fuel. But again, that comes back to um, no sparks or where that's set up. That with an exhaust under full load, you will have sparks coming out of that exhaust system. Okay. Yes, but when they refer to a spark, the spark in, a, in a contained environment. So it needs to, remember, to, to actually catch fire, it has to be four parts um, hydrogen, one part oxygen. Spark in a contained, air-tamed environment. Yeah, I mean if you're not if you don't want the cylinder in that location, speak to the mechanic or send him back yeah, yeah, and yeah. identify where you feel comfortable. Yeah. Right. I think we're all yeah, not approaching yeah. great unknown at the moment, all of us are. Oh, well, it is. Yeah, well, yeah. As soon as somebody says hydrogen, what do you think of? The big blimp. The big blimp, the big blimp <laughs> huh? Sure. I mean, in, in, in all honesty, I've, I've worked with this hydrogen, um, these cylinders, for over like nine years now. I would be a little bit cautious about liquid hydrogen because that's extremely explosive. But gaseous hydrogen, it, it's, it's a contained gas, it's an inert gas. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I mean, that's, that's my own personal experience. I've had. Nothing, nothing to ever give me a fear from it. Right. When you're changing the cylinders over, it's a hand wheel to change over the cylinders, like a barbecue swap and go system. I do recommend you use the soapy water bottle. So when you change it over, that there's no leak in the cylinder. Again, it's not I'm concerned about an explosion or a spark, I'm concerned about you're going to lose the gas. So if you've got a leak, because it's high pressure, it's going to dump all the gas through a leak. So the, the soapy water in a bottle sprayed around, if you have a bubble, then it shows you that there's a leak. Uh, there should not be because there's O-rings on it and they're also tapered valves. So when you, when you tighten in the, um, the hand wheel, they're self-locking. How often are we going to have to change it? 
this one around every four days but Kevin was saying yesterday I want to speak to Dave about it he might put multiple cylinders so you've got to change it less often So Kevin wants to speak to you about yeah, that, yeah. The, the practicality of whether you think that's suitable for your environment. Okay. All right. Again, the integrity of the cylinders, it's the gas company there to make sure they're safe and they're in good order at every stage. So you won't find any of these um, deteriorated cylinders because of the gas company's compliance that they can um, maintain safety. If the hydrogen was to um, leak, or be released, it's not going to hurt you, it's not going to burn or anything. It's, it's a non-corrosive, um, non-deteriorating to the, to the human body gas. It will automatically rise up. So if it catches fire for any reason, mm -hmm. is it a colour in the flame or is it a clear flame? It'll be a flame. Can you see, is it a clear flame or a coloured flame? No, it'll be a coloured flame. Yeah. The shrouds, um, which are around the regulator at the top of the cylinder, the gas companies under compliance want you to keep those shrouds on the cylinders. Um, they're easier to move them around, but it's also protecting the neck of the cylinder. Okay. Um, the cylinder we talked about, it's a hand wheel, and you can go up and have a look at it at any stage with Ross if you like, before we finish up. We've talked about the cylinder, the red, when they're empty and you're waiting for the gas companies come on a monthly basis to pick up the empties and, re and um, refill up the fill cylinders, empties on one side, full on the other, so the gas company will know automatically to pick up the empties from you. The gas company delivers and the gas company will pick up the cylinders monthly. Uh, again, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a flammable gas but non-corrosive and not dangerous to the human body. I'm talking to, talking to our industry professionals here, but the gas companies say to me to tell people don't roll them, don't, don't misuse the cylinders. I mean, you would tell that to a young apprentice, and I don't mean to offend you, but the gas companies just require we say that, don't roll them. How much weight's in those? You're looking at 21 kilos in that cylinder, um, empty 19. Right. Again, it's, it's the carrying of the cylinders. They, they're asking you to roll them, roll them around that way so you don't lift. If you put them on a trolley, strap them on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, um, the actual kit that's been installed, we've got the gas cylinder. It's 200 bar of gas. It's got a hand wheel connection, which takes the gas from the cylinder down to a regulator. The hose between the, the regulator and the cylinder, it's a high pressure hose and it's got a metal whip uh, attached to it so that cylinder will stay straight at all times. So that's the short hose, it's um, cylinder to regulator. It's the short hose that you will undo with your hand and reconnect when you're changing over the cylinders. You've got a two stage regulator the two-stage regulator, what that does, it should, the first gauge tells you how much gas is in the regulator and the second stage is the pressure. The pressure is preset to 10 bar. So we're coming down from 200 bar down to 10 bar. Um, the second stage regulator is designed that when the gas starts to empty in the bottle, you've got a consistent 10 stage flow, a 10 bar flow. If you, if you can imagine the welding bottle where you've got to keep adjusting them as the bottle's empty, this, this is um, self-regulating. 200 bar down to 10 bar consistently. The 10 bar is what's flowing through the, the long hose. Those hoses internally are an interwoven steel. So they can be in a rough environment. Um, they can't be damaged. They can't be cut. They have to be diamond cut, diamond drill cut. So they're designed for hydrogen. Um, being the interwoven steel, not only are they designed for harsh environments, they're designed to keep the molecules in, so they're leak proof. Um, these hoses are all specially hydrogen related hoses. The hand wheel that's going into the regulator and the regulator is brass, again to contain the hydrogen molecules. Other gases will, um, other metals, the gas will seep through. All of the connections um, are all interlocking. 
They've also been taped with hydrogen um, Teflon tape for, for leak testing. Um, we've, we've conducted all of that leak testing up there. The brackets, um, to undo the, the brackets to change the cylinder over, it's a butterfly screw. So again, no tools, butterfly screw, and that holds the cylinder in place. Inside. I, I, sorry. <laughs> Did you mention the, on, on the brackets there, um, there, there there's a rubber uh, in, case, in case the cylinder, so if there's any vibration it'll hold it solid. Sure, yeah, so inside, inside of the, the um, brackets that Rob Ross is talking about, we've got rubber and that will, that will take the, the vibration from the machine. There is quite a bit of vibration. These things are, we're climbing up angles like that, down angles like that, and off over concrete, and it gets quite rough. Sure, sure. The scope the cars break. Are there any potential for damage there, or is it only along the cope cars, which is a little bit of a concern? Or? Yeah. I'll probably melt before they break. Yeah. Right? yeah. Where they are, they're right in front of the exhaust. That's it. Talk to, to we'll, we'll take some notes now and we'll ask the mechanic to change it to suit where you feel comfortable with it. Yeah. All right. Um, as I said, the storage cylinder, storing the cylinders full on one side, empty on the other, away from other um, fuels. Storing the gas cylinders in bulk, away from any um, electrical points. All right. Um, as with any as, as with any emergency, evacuation is always the best recommendation. No, sorry. The um, cylinder companies do they provide at a fee or whatever um, different storage containers? They they can they they charge you about a dollar a week yeah. for a, a cylinder. Um, they they calling like them the, pallets. The cages yeah, or yeah, yeah, cylinder cylinder pallets. Okay. Yeah. So you can hire those from them. Yeah. Um, and that's probably the best way so they don't fall over and so forth in the storage areas. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so if you just want to have a look through, if you want to go up and have a look at anything while I'm talking to you, you're more than welcome to go up and have a look. Is this model, is it going to be turned off every day? Or no, no. So if once we fit it up and we turn it on, it's correct. Be left till it's correct. Once you, once, you, once you put the new cylinder in, <laughs> turn it on. Now, very important, when you turn it on, you must turn it on fully because it's got a mechanism in there that the valve needs to be open fully. It's a hand open. And it's got open and closed directions on the on the cylinder. Open it. What stops it from flowing when it's sitting here? It's going through the regulator, and then it's going to a solenoid. So the solenoid will only um, open the gas flow when you turn the switch on in the cabin. So there's this switch in your cabin, like an LPG switch. If you were in a car, you switch it on. That will open the solenoid. When you, when you finished, switch it off at the end of the night. So what happens if we accidentally get um, 30 odd years or 50 odd years of drive as soon as I'm ready to plug in the switches for it? If we get out and I'm thinking, oh, we're all young. Yeah, yeah absolu right. abs absolutely. The switch is your secondary one. The solenoid, if there's no, it's wired to the ignition. So if there's no ignition, the solenoid shuts. So it's a permanently open, permanently closed solenoid. So it's wired to the ignition. So it's when the ignition's on, the solenoid's opened. When the ignition's off, the solenoid shut, but the switch is a secondary um, shut off for you. So the, the, the solenoid is your shut off valve. The switch, the switch is just so we get used to turning it on and turning it off. So if you were, um, if you switch it off of the night, um, you, you, you made your one in there, and then you come in the next morning, you just forget about that one, and you just go through your, your key ignition. Does that override the other one? Correct. Or? Correct. Yeah, no, so correct. it won't start. Well, it will start, but it won't be running off hydrogen. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. So if you just have a look here, so as I say, where you're comfortable with, with moving it to, the mechanic can move it to. So you see the hand wheel from here on the cylinder? Yep. It's a left hand thread because it's hydrogen. Okay. So that won't, that you can't make the mistake of the wrong cylinder because it's left hand thread. Um, so the cylinder's coming down, the 200 bar hose is coming down into a regulator. Ross has just put the box here just last night for our benefit. So it's a two stage regulator. Now if you want again, if you want that moved away because you know where the heat factor is, the mechanic can do that for us. It's coming down off the regulator, we have a flame arrester. So if there was a spark in the engine, the flame cannot come back up the line to the cylinder. It's a one-way valve. 
So that's a safety mechanism there that it cannot come back to the regulator and back to the cylinder. We've um, on that with gas our oxy settling, we're going to get that um, checked every 12 months and certified. Is that the same as those regulators? This, this, this one, it's the, the, flame, the regulator's five years and the flame arrest is true because it's a hydrogen specific flame arrestor. Um, coming through the hose, once we hit the regulator, it comes from 200 bar down to 10 bar. We've got our solenoid. So the solenoid, as I said, it's wired to the ignition. So the solenoid's only open when ignition's on. Ignition's off, the solenoid's closed. Coming down from your solenoid, it, the hose goes into the air intake. So it doesn't touch any other part of your engine, it goes into the air intake. At the end of the air intake, there's an injector. And there's a single injector going in, mixing the hydrogen, the air, and the fuel together. That injector too has a five year, because it's hydrogen specific, has a five year um, checkpoint on it. The hoses, um, the manufacturer give you a 10 year warranty on them, because again, they're hydrogen related. The only other thing that we've got is the switch to the cabin. I think, did you mark it yesterday? Yeah, it's been marked. The um... goes from the cylinder into the air intake. Yeah. It's at the very last point before, before it goes into the chamber, into the combustion chamber. I've got my back to you, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're all right. Um, at the very last point, it mixes at the entrance of the combustion chamber. The hydrogen, as a molecule, it can't live alone. So once it's released, it's got to bond to something. So instantly it bonds to the fuel or it bonds to the nitrogen. Um, so what's happening when it bonds to the fuel, you've got the fuel molecule cracks and burns faster. The RPMs are reached faster. So the RPMs are reached faster, the engine holds back the, the, the diesel that's being injected. So it's just making... So if we have full throttle and take our hands off the controls and the engine comes back in oil, it's going to all dust automatically because it doesn't run full noise all day. Like you take your hands off, have sure. a spell or something. Sure, sure. It's about two seconds or three seconds, the engine will go back to idle. Yeah. Yeah, right. so, this, so this runs on idle as well as, as, well as, full, mm. um, as full throttle. So, so the basically, the, why the fuel's drawn back, because the engine recognises you've reached your RPMs. Okay. So th um, that's why you don't need, with, with the electronic engines, we've got to draw back the fuel, because the ECUs are saying, give it this much fuel no matter what. Yeah, with what, sorry? with the ECU engines, electronic fuel injected engines. Yeah. So the ECU's feeding that much fuel through whether you want it or not. Yeah. So we have a mechanism that draws back the, the fuel injection on the ECU's. We were trying to do that for you yesterday because on the ECU's we can guarantee 30% because we're controlling how much fuel goes in. Um, we, we did yesterday, we tested it um, on idle obviously because we can't use it on throttle. Um, and we run it for half an hour with hydrogen, half an hour without hydrogen. And the principle, the principle, sorry, the hydrogen is making the fuel more um, efficient. So it reached the RPMs faster. We, on this machine yesterday, we had a result of 3.5 um, litres of diesel used every 30 minutes. With the hydrogen, the result was um, 1.75 litres of, of diesel used in 30 minutes. So that, you say that brings the engines up quicker? It, it brings the RPMs That'll up. good and you're lifting screens in and out, or lifting things in and out of the... Like when you try to okay, use it up, it's just going to rev straight up on you. It's going to have to be something you watch too, or... No, you'll, get, you'll get a feel for that, yeah. I'm not sure that's... Yeah, well, it's something you get a feel, yeah, or something yeah, you have to be a little bit... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've got it on my car, and... You, you, when I'm driving on the hydrogen, you, you learn to pull your foot back because it because it's it's a reaching its RPMs faster. The average truck driver tells us three to five percent torque improvement um, under load, and they like they like torque improvement under load. Um, but you do you get a feel for it, it reaching its RPMs faster. You pull back from it. It's, essentially, it's very simple. Um, it's just the hydrogen being fed through a control mechanism into the air intake. Um, and so now it, it runs on the two fuels. If it was to run out of hydrogen, it runs on its diesel automatically. And we don't have to do anything? No. Yeah. So has it got an alarm, electronically or anything in there to let you know when it's slow or out of hydrogen? There is the regulator um, which tells you at this point, the industry's not been approved for 
um, a um, electronic screen. Yeah, no, that's right. no. and, and I just I just want to give you the, the, the reason so so you feel more comfortable. Because Hydrogen's new, the industry have not regulated electronic mechanisms because they don't want wiring directly to the cylinder. Until they can make a pressure um, a pressure gauge that's intrinsically safe, regulations won't let you have an electronic gauge at this point. Uh, the government's still getting used to what they're going to do. They're trying to copy as much as they can CNG standards, um, but because it's, it's all new to the government, that they make the rules what you can't do, and until the manufacturers and the government set the standards, um, we can't add things to it that the you know, is going to be gone compliant. Uh, copy, Benny. Copy.